before we get started today, I just wanted to remind you that the Thingbox giveaway has eight days left. And if you want to apply, you need to go to this URL, or the link will be down in the description, and you have to do each of these. One thing to remember is you're not automatically entered just by being subscribed. You actually have to go here and confirm it. So if you expect it to automatically be entered, uh, just remember, go here, confirm everything on this page, and then you'll be entered and you have an opportunity, well, three opportunities here to win the thing box. So back on with the regular video. What's going on guys, it's Dale here from Demsec. And you may remember a while ago, NordVPN approached me and basically gave me a free license to use NordVPN in order to make a review. And that video got all different types of comments about why, why would I use a VPN? What's the benefit of using a VPN? Um, and also on the Raspberry Pi VPN video, both of which will be linked somewhere, probably in the description. But if you want to go and see those, they're both available to watch. But the Pi VPN video opened up even more questions where people were saying, so how do I change my IP with this? And this all kind of comes down to the fact that VPNs aren't just like, they don't just do one thing. Well, they do. They, they do one thing is they move network traffic, but the way in which you use them can be vastly different. So for example, let's look here, and we've got our PC going out to the internet, and you know, there'd be a router in here or a switch or something, but let's just say for argument's sake, our PC goes out to the internet directly, and then our traffic, because we're using a VPN service, goes out to a VPN server, and then that VPN server is where our traffic, as far as the internet concert is concerned, originates. So if we're trying to go to google.com and we're using a full tunnel, um, and this is what, what I'm explaining here is, a full tunnel encrypts all of your data and everything leaves via the VPN. So for example, if I'm on this machine and I'm trying to go to google.com, it goes out encrypted over the internet to the VPN server, where it gets decrypted by the end VPN server, and goes out to the internet. And if we're using HTTPS, um, it's only the open VPN connection which is actually uh, unencrypted at this stage. And if we're using HTTPS, it's still end-to-end -end encrypted via this tunnel. So that's the kind of way in which most people assume VPNs work. And when you buy a VPN service, that is pretty much what is advertised. But there's also another way in which to use a VPN, and that's using a split tunnel. So I'm going to use the same diagram to try and explain this one, so you've got to keep up with me. So with a split tunnel, your actual traffic going out to the internet isn't going via the VPN server. And this is because this VPN server might be inside a corporate network. So let's add something to our corporate network. So as I said, we're using a split tunnel now. And what that actually means is your PC will go to the internet as normal, but if your VPN is switched on, you'll be able to also access internal resources which are on the same same network as the VPN server without all of your data going through, which has its benefits, and one of which is simply bandwidth. If all of my traffic is going out through this VPN server, it may only be, you know, an ADSL connection over here to some, like, remote office. So you may only want actual traffic that's destined for this network to go there in order to just cut down on bandwidth usage. Because if you're trying to troubleshoot an issue and you're watching YouTube videos and whatever and it's all going across this slow connection here, even if you've got like a gigabit connection here and this has only got 10 meg, with all of your traffic going through, you're essentially limited to this 10 meg here. If it's split tunnel, you have full access to your internet as normal. Your default gateway doesn't change, but you also have access to internal resources and it's done completely encrypted. So this is what a lot of companies use. Another thing that people do is set up a VPN server on a VPS provider. So I, for example, use DigitalOcean and you create a VPS, which is, you know, a virtual Linux server or Windows server out in the cloud that you can access and do whatever you want with. And it's got a public IP. And a lot of people go ahead and set up their own VPN servers on that. And that's a really good idea because you're not contending with other users on the platform. Um, you get dedicated resources, troubleshooting if the VPN's down, it's on you to fix, which can be a benefit if you know how to fix it really quickly. But there's also a few privacy concerns connected to this. So, for example, if you were being monitored, if your connection was being monitored, they'll see you go out to the internet, to the VPS provider, which then routes it to the actual virtual server itself, and then out to the internet. 
if you're the only user on this server, even though they won't be able to see the actual content of the data going across the link here, they will be able to tell that it's your traffic going out here and you still have the issue where metadata could be leaked during this loop. With the VPS option, and you can see here that I've gone back to like the standard diagram here, another issue with the VPS method is this means your trust is in the hands of a VPS provider and they may not be specialised or they may not be based in countries which actually allows them to protect your data. So for example, if I'm browsing using DigitalOcean, they're obviously based in the United States, as far as I'm aware. I may be wrong there, but they're based in a country where if a court order says they have to give up your data, they have to give up your data. And because all that data is residing on a VPS, which is on one of their physical servers, and it's very unlikely that that data is encrypted on those disks, they can actually go ahead and give them, you know, network traffic um, packet captures to whoever is investigating you. They can uh, give them the entire VM image if they really wanted to, and they could forensically analyze that. So the benefit of using a VPN provider in terms of privacy is your data not only gets bundled up with a bunch of other people, so it makes it, makes it a lot more difficult to um, pick your data out from the bunch, but for example, NordVPN is based in Panama, which don't have the same laws which apply in the US where a court order can force them to give up data. In fact, there's actually been so many reports and people have come up and emailed me after the fact saying that NordVPN have literally gone ahead and told um, the user that they're being investigated and also told the investigating body that they don't keep logs, there's nothing they can actually give to them. So this being said, this like single VPN could still be linked to you if we're talking about an adversary which has control of the entire internet. So what do we do in that case? So there's a few VPN providers which actually have this feature and I'm just gonna draw it now. So this has got a little bit more complicated over here and this is like a, well, what NordVPN calls a double VPN. And a bunch of other providers have this, but I'm using NordVPN just because that's what I have access to at the moment. And what essentially happens is your PC goes out to the internet and connects to a VPN server in, for example, Sweden. And then that data is then encrypted and sent to a different server, which might be in the UK, which is where it looks as though your data resides. And the benefit of this is your ISP, which is between you and the internet, can see you connect to this server, but then has no way of um, correlating that your data has then gone to uh, the United Kingdom and then back out to the internet. And that makes it a lot more difficult, especially because this link here is, you know, like a bulk link. So even if there's a thousand users connected to this and it is a double VPN server, there's also a thousand users coming out here. So there's no way of correlating, well, from a high level perspective, you know, government agencies, who knows what they can actually do. But from here, it makes it a lot more difficult to correlate that the per this person connecting to Sweden is actually popping back out in the UK and connecting to the internet. It makes it a lot more difficult to see. This is also applies when you're using one of the Tor convicts. So if you go out to the internet and to your VPN provider, instead of going out to another server here, your, in your connection is actually connected to Tor at this stage and then forwarded out to the internet. So this being said, if there were any issues with your browser or anything like that which could reveal your IP, you're still going over a VPN to an old VPN server. So if this is based in Sweden, they're gonna have some Swedish IP, even if your IP was revealed due to an issue in the Tor browser or the Tor protocol. Now this was a very talky video, but there was a lot of questions raised about this and I really hope it has helped in some way. Um, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments, but I just wanted to go ahead and kind of clear up some of the ways in which VPNs can be used, which aren't just blatant, like, privacy things. Um, I use a VPN daily to connect back to my uh, flat, and because I've got a server here, a file server, which uses SMB, and obviously you don't want SMB open on the internet, so the safest way to do it is cr create a VPN server, which we did with the Pi, and uh, there'll be a card above with link to that if you haven't already seen it. And that allows me to keep connect back home and access files as if I was connected there. And that is what uh, that is using a split tunnel like we discussed before. So my internet still goes out normally, but I also just have access to my file server. 
I know we didn't really do very much in this video, we didn't really actually make anything, but yeah, as I said, I wanted to clear up some things about VPNs. Any questions, any issues, anything like that, leave them in the comments down below. Remember to subscribe, and if you actually want to help us out and uh, you're interested in playing with a VPN, NordVPN actually have a uh, code for us. All the details will be down, down below, just click the link and it'll uh, do everything that you need to do to get the deal. Once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.